auto start recording. All righty. Uh, so how many that are on here right now went to the business planning clinic either Thursday or Friday? Rick, Isaiah. Okay. So I want to know, I want you to share with the group, each of you, at least one aha and something you're going to implement in your business. And then I have some things to talk about around it too. <clears throat> Who wants to start us off? Uh, I can start. Okay. Uh, my aha will probably be um, during the football season is send out um, uh, like a schedule of the teams, that team that I know that they like, you know, so I could send out something like, hey, you know, uh, just to re remind them of myself. Okay, that's a good one. Rick, did you have one? I did. Um, <laughs> and it expanded on an aha I had from earlier, uh, from figuring it all out with you um, on our business planning clinic um, a year ago. And then he expanded on, um, you know, realize if I get one appointment a week, I'm going to do good. I mean, just like focus on that one appointment a week. And that's what I have been doing, but I wasn't as laser focused as I am now, thanks to the pointers he gave. So that's, that was my big aha, I would say, among others, but. Awesome. I liked that one too. <clears throat> Isaiah, did you have one? Yeah, I was trying to, there was so much going on. I was trying to think of one, at least. There was several, but the one I, I kind of like that you mentioned was, I believe you say his agents on his team at one point were setting an alarm to golf like every nine minutes to make an appointment. I'm not going to go that extreme, but I had it go off this morning. I put it Monday morning, 8.30, set an appointment. Uh, I might do that daily, but I like that. I just kind of like remind you, because sometimes I lead generate, but I forget to try and set an appointment. I'm just talking to people. You yeah. Know, I need that reminder to set an appointment. Yeah. And our goal, that's, that's our end, our, well, not our end goal, but that's our first goal, right? Because we yeah. need that appointment to get to the end goal. <clears throat> and I had that aha as well. And one of the things I, I believe when he talked about um, snoozing it for, you know, nine minutes and it would keep going off till he set the appointment. I think he was being a little facetious there. I don't think he was serious because it was more about Monday morning, 8 a.m., 9 a.m., whatever your start time is, have your phone set to go off to set an appointment. What I would do is have it go off every morning at that time until I set my appointment. Then that would earn me the right to turn the alarms off until Monday, right? Or, you know, maybe Wednesday at five o'clock, set another reminder, whatever works for you. But I loved that. I thought that was a good idea because it, it keeps us in that focus. So we've had a few more people join us since we started the conversation. Would love for cameras to come on. Um, and the rest of you that joined us, did anyone else attend the business planning clinic Thursday or Friday? Thank you for those cameras. So if you attended, awesome. So what I would love to do for the rest of you, if you attended, um, please give us your aha. And then afterwards, I have some things that we're going to expand on. Uh, this may have been mentioned already, um, but my aha was just how it broke everything down to, hey, you you need to add a new contact each week or half a contact per week or get a 0.3 of a listing each week. And so it kind of gives you a pace of, um, it, it's it's like, you know, you look at your yearly goal, it's like an elephant but you just eat it one bite at a time. You just take it one day at a time and, and work towards those goals uh, on a daily and weekly basis. And, and if you do that consistently, then it's going to end up, you know, you'll, you'll reach your goal. Absolutely. <clears throat> Great aha. And by the way, it's okay if somebody already said yours, um, because some of us may have the same one. You guys have already said some of the things I was going to share, but I'll expound on them. And, um, by sharing these, it helps it helps kind of resolidify it in our heads and helps others that may not have gotten that same point, right? Because that is that was a lot of information to take in. So who else has an aha? 
Hi. <clears throat> so I like the breakdown of the the mat, you know, like how many uh, appointments you have to um, do a week to, in order to get the number what you have in your mind. So yeah. I like. Awesome. Anyone else? Linnell, did you say you went? What was your aha? Sorry, I had something popping up weird on my computer. Um, I liked um, the alarm. I, I got on here a couple minutes late, but I like the alarm. I don't know if you already said that. Setting that on Monday morning and then not stopping it until you get your appointment. And yeah. then just him breaking down like one appointment a week, what that'll bring you in the future. So I like that too. Anyone else? Okay, so as I mentioned before, for the, the benefit of, of the others, a couple people had that all holonel. And one of the things um, that I wanted to point out, which I said a little bit ago, was he was being facetious when he said the snooze every nine minutes, right? <laughs> so set it daily until you set that appointment every day at your lead gen time as that reminder. Because one of the things that he mentioned that I thought was really poignant if he were to offer you, and he used $240,000, I'm going to show you an example in a minute, $200,000 for round numbers. And the reason I'm doing it is because it's an average price point for all four market centers combined. Some of you are going to have it, uh, it's going to take less appointments to get to that same number. Some of you, it might be point two more appointments, okay? But if I were to pay you, and he mentioned this for those of you that were there, if I were to pay you $200,000 a year and hire you right now, and your only job was to set what kind of appointment, do you remember? A listing appointment, right? That, could, that, that would work as well, but he did say something very specific. And this is where we get lost when we track appointments. This is why I want to point it out. Because he didn't just say that you get paid that if you set an appointment every day. Or didn't he say it was a new appointment with someone you've never met with before? A new client appointment. Meaning the first appointment that you ever have with a client. Because remember, you're going to have lots of appointments. You're going to have several appointments with one buyer for showing different houses till they go into contract. You're going to have an appointment with that buyer to meet them at the house for inspections, right? Once you have a listing, you're going to have appointments to take pictures or to do your Avid or whatever the case may be. Those appointments do not count in the number of appointments you need to hit your goal. Does everyone understand that? Because that's really, really, really key. And a lot of agents think that, oh, well, I have this buyer and because I'm showing them property that could lead to a contract, that should count as my appointment for this week. Well, no, because if you have one buyer and you have to make 10 different appointments before you get them in a contract, what are you doing with the rest of your pipeline? So it's incredibly important that it's new client appointments, one a week. So if I were to pay you $200,000 to find one new person a week, and that's all you had to do, and now we're going to give you a check every week that broke down to $200,000 a year, how hard would you work to do that? Would you do it? If you knew you were going to lose your job if you didn't set an appointment every week. What would you do to get that appointment? Talk to as many people as I can so I can get the appointment. <laughs> yeah. Make sure you set that appointment. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how hard is that, right? What's the bold law? It's simple, not easy. 
So if you knew that your job depended on that, and that's how you're going to support your family, all you have to do is one new client appointment a week. And someone else was paying you to do it. Every week that money showed up in your bank account or once a month or however they pay you. How hard would you work? Would everybody here raise your hand if you would work hard to keep that job because you're guaranteed 200 grand a year? Okay. Guess what, guys? That's a proven number. Year after year after year after year, those formulas are proven. So if you'd work that hard for someone else, How much more so should we work that hard for ourselves? But for some reason, when it comes to ourselves, eh, I got next week. I'll just get two next week. Oh, didn't get one this week. I'll get three next week. Before you know it, three months have gone by. You got two appointments in three months. You're in the weeds. Your goal's shot tech. Anybody identify with that thinking? One new client appointment a week, guys. That's all it takes. And if you want more than that, if you want more than 200 grand, get two appointments a week. Double it. Most of your market centers, you're going to make probably, well, let's just look at it. Let's look at it from, because he did it from the standpoint of California. We got two scenarios we can look at for you guys, because there's somebody from every market center on this call right now. So this is super fast. So let's just take a couple seconds so that everybody can see it. Does everybody here know what their number is for their goal? Okay. So I did this based on 550,000. Get one appoint to come out to one appointment gives you 200,000. So um, let's see, we got a couple people here from Tulare County. So let's just put in 350 because let's be real, right? 1.3 appointments a week. How many is that a month? Five, right? <laughs> 5.25. So if this is the average price point, this is what you need to be doing. So if you're missing the mark on one a week, you're missing the mark on this number. Okay. For the rest of you, your average price point is probably a little higher than this, but let's just put in 700,000. We're at one appointment. Right? If you know your average price point is, let's just say 850, let's go in the middle of a couple of you, one appointment. And if you're doing one appointment a week, you're going to have extra appointments at the end of the year that's going to give you more. Now, if you want a bigger net profit, one a week at that price point. <clears throat> so hopefully all of you understand how to use this sheet. Does everybody understand how to use this sheet? Okay. So um, anybody, before I unshare the screen, anybody overwhelmed by the rest of this sheet or have questions about it? Um, actually, it's my first time seeing it um, in week two of uh, the program, so I'm just taking all this in. Okay. Uh, well, Manny, this was given out at the um, business planning clinic, um, right. and so I, if you email me to remind me, I can get you a copy of this. Okay? Thank you so much, and I actually meet with you on Wednesday morning. Okay. Perfect. We can take a look at it. <clears throat> okay. Um, so hopefully all of you understand how, you know, we've all talked about our 135 and our 411s, right? So if you have, so let me ask you, let me find the thing to unshare here. There we go. Who has finished their business plan for 2023? That's okay, because this is a work in progress, guys. I didn't expect it to be finished yet. <laughs> 
who has a good idea, who knows their goal number? Who knows their goal? How many appointments they need per week? I know for me is one a week. Okay. Hopefully all of you that attended the business planning clinic know that, okay? Here's what you need to do. If you are in momentum coaching or growth coaching, or you have completed your business plan or know your number and you're not yet in one of those, you need to reach out to your specific group coach and schedule an appointment to help you go create your business plan. Now, they're not going to create it for you. This is your plan. It's personal to you, but they're going to guide you to get started on it, okay? And then once you have it, I'm going to task you to email it to them to look at. And then they can guide you with anything that you may need to tweak. Because remember, these are not to-do lists. These are smart, smartly worded. And you, does everybody know what I mean by smartly worded? Smart goals, specific, measurable, action-oriented, realistic, and time-bound. So you should be able to track it. A, a person off the street should be able to pick up your business plan and look at it, and it should only fit on one page, right? Look at it and know exactly what to hold you accountable to. So it needs to be smartly worded, Simple, short and to the point, but it's not a to-do list, remember? And some things might only take you a month or two to complete. And some things could be ongoing week after week, month after month, the whole year. Or some things may not happen until, say, third or fourth quarter based on something that you're going to do. All of that is okay. As long as it keeps you on track for your business. So does anybody have any questions or need help to get started with creating that um, business plan? I mean, some of my, um, to, because I'm a brand new agent, so some of the things like how much like it's going to take for marketing, you know, how much you're going to put into that budget is a little cloudy right now because I'm just starting out. So some of that stuff is hard to fill in for me. Yep. And that makes sense. So you're not alone there, Linnell. And so those of you that haven't yet completed your first 90-day checklist, stick with the business plan we gave you, okay? The one that's in your checklist at the bottom, it's like the third tab over on the bottom. Stick with that because that is going to get you to the place you need to be. And then we'll revisit this once you've gone through that checklist, okay? Okay. So those of you that are in your first 90, 120 days, remember, let me give a reminder here for those of you who are newer. Don't be discouraged by the fact, matter of fact, we're making some tweaks and changes. We've told you we have some enhancements coming. Um, one of the things, and it's such a simple thing, is we're going to stop calling it a 90 days to success. And um, it's get, we don't we haven't decided fully on the name yet. We will by the end of the week. Suggestions are welcome, but it'll be something to the effect of first steps to success. Because what we don't want is people to be so tied to a number that they feel they're behind. If say you have another job and you you aren't moving as fast as somebody without another job, or life happens, right? Um, or maybe you zoom through it and you're saying, eh, I got 90 days. I don't need to do that today. I'm on track. I'm going to just take the day off. Right. So either way, we don't want you to use it as an excuse that it can take you longer than it needs to. And we don't want you to feel discouraged if it's taking you longer than you'd hoped. Okay. So it's simple little things like that. So what, if, if we make that tweak, which we have lots of big enhancements coming, not just what we name something, by the way. <laughs> but what does it go to? Why are we, why do you think we're making that tweak? What is it going to help you guys with? It would totally help me to focus more on real estate because, as you said, you know, I have another job and I'm totally overwhelmed. So I think it would like take off the pressure also to like, 
do it in, in, in the first 90 days, then I can, you know, be a little bit easy on myself if I yeah. don't complete it in a 90 days. Yeah. And it goes to our mindset, right? Because we came at it before with the fact that, yes, full-time agents should be able to have that done in 90 days. No, no, no brainer. A lot of, a lot of people can do it in 60 days or sooner. However, we're also never going to hold back an agent with another job thinking they can't do it in 90 days because they have another job because a lot can. Doesn't mean everybody can, but a lot can. So one of the things that we really want to work on is mindset and how we talk. And you guys should think about this too and how you're talking to yourselves. Because our mindset can either hold us way back or propel us way forward. Has anybody had an experience either with limited beliefs or or opening up those beliefs and taking them to a new level and have changes made that you're willing to share? Where I mean, I have just a little experience. I noticed on myself when I kind of like sat back and I, I, you know, kind of digest the information and then maybe I take a mini vacation, which I just did <laughs> last week, <laughs> then it gives me more and re-energized and gives, gets me more focused and gets me more fresh for the next week. So just for me, what works is if I sat back and just, you know, a little bit, yeah, just sat back and just re-energize and refocus on things. And we do need to do that sometimes, Rick. Yeah, I was just, <clears throat> I'll share something. I don't, I don't mind sharing it. Uh, you know, when I was younger, I used to, I used to, you know, get in trouble a little, little bit and this and that. And uh, you know what it was? I just had a terrible attitude. And today, I mean, the power of positive reinforcement and just, you know, focusing on what you want to do because what you focus on expands. That's a fact, Jack. And, you know, it all started when I found this, uh, this Tony Robbins cassette date tape thing in, in the uh, thrift store. And it had these cards. I still have those cards on my desk and I just flip one. So every time I'm working, I look at it and it's basically all it is, is positive reinforcement. And it is amazing what that does for you, the power of the mind. And there's another good book called uh, The Four Agreements. And if you can uh, do your best with those, it's pretty amazing too. But it's all it's all up here. So. Absolutely. What's the difference between getting into your lead generation session or let's call it your appointment setting session, right? And saying, oh man, I don't want to make these calls today. All right, who do I need to call? Or starting your session and going, I get to make an appointment today so I can make $200,000 this year. Or I'm going to make an appointment today so I can make $200,000 this year. Big difference. It doesn't necessarily mean you're still going to love to do something you may not love to do, but it's going to help you with the right focus, right? And when you start making those appointments and you start achieving your goals, you're going to learn to love to do the things you don't currently love to do because they're going to get you the things you love and want to do, right? So mindset is powerful and that's why we talk about it so much because let me ask you, what's harder? To fall into the trap of negative thinking when something goes wrong or to stop that and switch over into how do you make lemonade out of lemons? Which one is harder? Definitely the lemonade. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Isn't it so easy as humans we so easily fall into the negativity and woe is me and oh my gosh, all these things that could happen that may not ever happen and we stress ourselves out, we end up obliterating our lead generation day, if not week, over this thinking 
versus, okay, we have a moment, right? Because we're human, so we have that negative moment. That's a knee-jerk reaction. Those things we can't control, right? But after that moment, we have total control in how we choose to continue to react. That's where we change the thinking. And when we get all those no's, right? Because everybody tells me it's frustrating. I'm calling my sphere. It's not working. I had an agent. I Okay. I have to share two things with you. Okay. So it, it's it's not squirrely. This goes into what we're talking about, but I'm they're here. So I got to share them. I had an agent last week. Had a conversation with them. They told me calling their sphere isn't working. They want to start paying for two different types of ways to get leads because calling their sphere is not working. They, every time they call, they say no, they don't know anybody. Then about 15 minutes into our conversation, they proceed to tell me that they have five listings potentially coming up in the next couple of months and keeps going and keeps talking about all this other stuff. And so um, after they were done talking, I went back and I said, wait, you said you had five listings coming up. Did I hear that right? And yes. So, okay, what is the source of those listings? And they said, well, okay, this one's SOI. And this one and this one are connected in their SOI. And as he's thinking about it, this one's an open house. And this one, it, it's an SOI. And I said, but wait a minute, didn't a few minutes ago, you just told, tell me SOI is not working? And the look on their face was like, and they said, yeah. And I said, do you realize that all five listings you have coming up are free? Because they're SOI and open house? I said, when you mentioned to me that SOI wasn't working, did you think out the things that you have in your pipeline, where they came from, that they actually came from your SOI? And they said, no. It's just because they had to make so many calls and they hear so many no's that they weren't even focusing on all the yeses of the pipeline building. That was a powerful conversation. So I want you guys to hear that and I want you to think about it the next time you think this isn't working. Go back to every piece of business you've had or that is in your pipeline, whether it's next month or next year, where is that business coming from? I guarantee you the majority of it is SOI. The vast majority. So don't come to me and say, should I pay for leads? What else can I do to get leads if you're not working your SOI? I know we say that a lot, but that was a powerful conversation that I wanted to share with you guys because it was asking questions and digging deeper that helped this person realize that it really was working, but their thinking was off because they were focused on all the no's. So I just have a quick um, adding to this. I, I believe what you said, it's true. Your SOI is very important and probably our first lead will come from an SOI. But my struggle is that which probably you heard before, my SOIs are not in this state, it's in a different state. Uh, so I've been calling them and I'm trying to convince them to buy property on the central coast, <laughs> or if they know anyone, but literally that's my majority of SOIs from New York and of course from, you know, from another country. But uh, so I'm just building here my, I've been only here for four years, which is a long time, but so that's my struggle. I'm trying to find people here, uh, but my SOI here is probably 10% and out of state, it's like 90%. So. 
So, okay. And a lot of people struggle with that. So the thing is, is don't focus on what you don't have. Focus on what you have. Okay. So you have a couple opportunities with your SOI, Adina, and this, I'm, this goes to everyone. So if you've had these thoughts too, please listen. The people that are not local to you, they are still SOI. They are still important. Are they going to buy and sell with you? Likely not. They're probably not moving to where you live. But they may need to buy or sell where they live. They can rely on you to find them an agent where they live that you, could, you trust, that they can trust. And you can get a referral fee. And you can know that your family or friends or whoever they are is being taken care of properly. Okay, so that's how we go to the SOI in our non-area. We're not trying to convince them to buy or sell something with us. That's unreasonable. That's unrealistic. However, the SOI that we do have, have you, so this is a question to everybody. Everybody probably gets their hair cut by someone. Does that person know you're in real estate? Everybody probably sees the same two or three checkers at the grocery store. Do they know you're in real estate? The same two or three bag bag people, the you know, the grocery baggers <laughs> um, at the grocery store, do they know you're in real estate? The barista at the coffee shop you go to, the server at the restaurants you go to. Does everybody that you come in contact with know you're in real estate? And do you get their contact information and put it in your command? So if you don't have a local SOI, you need to build it. Do open houses, go to um, events, networking events, go to the farmer's market and buy your produce there and talk to 10 people before you leave. You guys have tons of farmer's markets in your areas, most of you. We have a little one here in Tulare County, but it still works, right? In other areas, you guys have multiple ones close together. Use them. And as your goal being one new client appointment a week, go find those appointments somewhere. And who here is thinking, oh yeah, that's easier said than done to go get an appointment with a total stranger. Anyone thinking that? Because we have people in our program. I have an agent who was with us um, for a couple of years. And um, her first clients were the uh, Baskin Robbins lady, the Starbucks gal, the mechanic, and the um, physical therapist. She didn't have an SOI or much of one. She opened four escrows in six weeks. because she didn't know a stranger. Yeah, that's what I've been doing, what you just listed. So hopefully, eventually, <laughs> we'll work out. But yeah, I, I'm talking to everybody. But are you getting their information and putting it into command? Well, I it's hard to, like, the first time ask for the phone number or, you know, because they don't really know me. So I give my information, my card to them. So what is that going to do? But, but how do I just ask them? I cannot just ask someone who I barely know adina but... can i have your phone number please <laughs> adina would... would you mind giving you giving me your email i have something i want to share with you um about your neighborhood would that be okay <laughs> well i would probably say no if i don't know you i don't care what you would say that's a limiting <laughs> belief <laughs> there's a lot of people out there that if you ask will do it if you don't uh... ask, you're never going to get it Okay, so just ask them if they if they want to, okay, to add them to the neighborhood plan. Okay, cool. Or how I'm about, good. so you guys, I'm going to say something, and this is going to sound rude, but I'm going to say it anyway. A couple of you have heard me say this so many times, so you know where I'm coming from with it. The rest of you, stop giving out business cards. A couple of you are laughing because you know why. Why? Stop doing it. What happens when you get a business card from somebody? What do you do with it most of the time? Toss it. <laughs> Throw it away. 
All right, Emily, you're the odd duck. Nobody does that anymore. <laughs> Listen, here's what happens. 99% of people throw it away. And well, maybe not 99, most people throw it away. The handful that keep them, they go in the wallet, they go in the purse, they go in the desk drawer until three, six months from now, when you clean out the wallet, the purse or the desk drawer, then they go in the trash. What good is it to give someone a business card they're never going to look at again? In all likelihood, is somebody randomly going to look at one? Sure. Okay. But that's not how we get the business. How we get the business is we exchange information. So essentially what I'm telling you is you should never Give a business card to someone without also getting their information. And anybody ordering or reordering cards, if you haven't already, make sure they are white and not glossy on the back. Because some, because you're going to say, oh, it was so great meeting you today, Adina. Would you mind? Um, let's share business cards. Here's my information. Can I have yours, please? I'd love to talk to you again. Oh, I don't have a card. Oh, no problem. I have an extra one. You can write your information here on the back. So anyone telling me that they don't have an SOI and they're not building their database and they're just giving away business cards and not asking for information, not going to cut it. Get out of your comfort zone. Don't worry about what you would or wouldn't do because everybody's not you. I know, but I got some no's. I try it and I say like, okay. no, you know, like it's I a lot of how many no's you get when you don't ask, 100%, <laughs> right? When you ask, even if you get 50% that give it to you, is that more than you had before? So get out of your comfort zone and start asking the question. And hit, let, let me make it even easier for you guys. Think about this. Because you know, we want you guys to get to a database of 300 as soon as possible. Because a database of 300 that you work consistently for a year and then consistently adding to and working it consistently is going to get you to your goals. It's going to take a year to get it built. It's going to get you to your goals. Here's the thing. Add one new person a week to command. Just one. Now it's going to go slower if you're only adding one. But by adding just one, you can still take two weeks off and add 250 people in one year. Now, is it that hard to add one person a week? Make it a goal of meeting five people a week and get it done in two and a half months. There are so many activities everywhere that we live, events to go to. Don't ever go to an event again without going with the goal of talking to a certain number of people in that event, which leads me to the next thing I want to share with you guys. So my husband and I, this was a couple of weeks ago, and we haven't had a mastermind for me to share this with you uh, since then because of the holiday and, and whatnot. We had went here to a local uh, brewery. Some of you know Barrel House Brewing Company. We have one here in Visalia. We went to there and um, we got some dinner from next door and we were having a drink and we were going to listen to some, um, some guy was playing music. We didn't actually plan to stay. Um, to, to listen to the music. We were actually watching the Dodger game. Don't want to hear anything. Bad day today for Dodger fans. Bad day. Um, anyway, there's always next year. Anyway, um, so all of a sudden, it's a one-man band, and he comes up to our table and hands us this paper and says, hey, you know, I take any requests. Here's a list of everything I can play. Just let me know what you want to play. But first, before he said that, he introduced himself. He gave us his name. 
um, you know, asked our names. And then he said, oh, and by the way, I've also attached the sheet because I also happen to be a local realtor. And so if you need any help with buying or selling a home, um, I can help you with that too. And, I, and my husband started laughing. And I said, and I've never met this guy before. And I know most of the agents in the area, but he's a little bit newer and he's in Porterville. So um, um, I laughed and I said, well, you know what, Billy? I said, um, uh, I'm actually a realtor as well and a productivity coach for realtors. I said, and I got to tell you, I'm really impressed with you. <laughs> And I'm going to be sharing this with my group because he took something he was doing and figured out a way to add the real estate conversation to it. And so I actually am uh, trying to set an appointment with him to recruit him because he's not with Keller Williams. On top of that, just so that you guys won't tell me, oh, yeah, but you're in real estate, too. So you think this is great and that's so hard. How are people going to act? If I go up to him and say this, that's going to be so weird, right? Because some of you are thinking that. So because I knew that, I watched. I watched as he went around the place. He got in some really great conversations with people. No one was upset that he approached them. Then when he was doing his thing on stage, he remembered some of the names of the people in the crowd. He remembered some of the songs they wanted. It was easy to remember ours. How do you forget Jerry and Jody Jolly? That's kind of easy, right? He even announced from stage that there was another realtor in the house and <laughs> said my name. So it, it was, I mean, granted, most of you aren't on stage somewhere, right? But the point is, he was there to do something and he attached real estate to it and he found a cool, fun way to do it. And I thought that was really incredible. Talk about getting out of your comfort zone and not having limiting beliefs. He worked the room for a good 30 minutes before he started his act. And he probably spent two to five minutes at each table. Depending on, you know, how the conversation went. And I was watching everybody just laugh with him. And have a good time. The... Don't think you can't do it because you can. Go meet people. I'm going to challenge. I'm going to challenge every one of you this week. No, I didn't mean that, Luke. <laughs> this was a couple weeks ago. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I'm kidding. Um, but your story, you know, how everybody know how Sousa, the house. Uh -huh. Like that's what he says. He just says he was a bartender. Yep. And now, now he's, I don't know how much money he's got in his pocket, but it's a lot. <laughs> oh yeah. And he just says his first clients were just people he met bartending. So pretty awesome. Yep. And that's a true story. I know um, I still call him Yalise because I've always known him as that. Um, but I've known him for years. I, I knew him when he started in this business. And he literally didn't know a stranger. And he came here from another country, flat broke, no money, literally broke. And now he lives a very nice, comfortable life and helps a lot of other people because he, had, he did not have limiting beliefs. He came here determined to make it. I came to this country with like probably $100 in my pocket. Yeah. It was a long time ago. I'm fine now. But. Well, that's good. But if you can dream it, you can make it happen. Right? So I know we say this a lot, but Henry Ford's quote, if you think you can, or if you think you can't, you're right. There's another one that I always go by. And it was a, the guy who was a world champion bull rider taught me how to ride bulls. And he's very... Well, he's super literate. I mean, not literate, but uh, very well read. And he says, whatever you vividly imagine, ardently desire, sincerely believe in, and enthusiastically act upon must inevitably come to pass. So the enthusiastically act upon part is the part I think people struggle with the most. So yeah. That goes back to what you were saying of showing up with a good attitude, showing up with energy, showing up like you know, he used to tell us, wake up every morning, going like this. I'm the champ. I'm the champ. Yeah. I'm waving the crowd, you know, just boosting yourself if nobody else is there to do it. So 
Uh, that quote's always stuck with me. I love that. I love that. Enthusi- what is it? Enthusiastically? Act. Whatever you vividly imagine, ardently desire, sincerely believe in, and enthusiastically act upon must inevitably come to pass. Will you type that in the chat, please? I want to copy that. I'm going to steal that (laughs) because I love that. Thank you for sharing that, Luke. Mm -hmm. But that's so true. I know I've heard somebody say before, when you first wake up in the morning and get out of bed, squat down and jump as high as you can, right? Because it gets the juices flowing and it just feels positive. And that kind of goes along with uh, what Luke just said. So mindset matters a lot. Who here is still nervous about talking to new people, making a one appointment a week? Anyone? So I'm going to challenge all of you to be back on this uh, mastermind next week. And I'm going to give you a challenge. And I am screenshotting right now all of your faces. And those of you even not showing your faces, I have your names everyone to set one appointment and add five new people, new people to your database. One a day. And one appointment for the week, new client appointment. Because I know you can do it. Everybody in? Everybody be back next week and tell us how you did, okay? Um, And I want you to share in your groups this week when you're asked what your um, commitment is. I want you to share that with them. Oh, I'm going to screenshot that too, Luke. Thank you. Jody, that guy at Bear House, was he collecting contact info as well or just handing the sheet over? Um, I think he was trying to collect contact info. I mean, obviously he didn't ask me for my um, information because he gave me his, he got my name and um, I told him I was going to reach out to him. But still, that's a good question, Isaiah, because even if somebody tells you that, don't trust it. Get their information. Hmm. Because I can't tell you how many people say they will and they don't. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> that you guys can um you guys all have the ability and you guys can all do this and it remember it's simple not necessarily easy but it's simple so keep it up the so one new client appointment and five new people to your database And then I have a a question off topic, kind of, well, it's off topic, but sort of on topic. (laughs) Who here is attending daily kickstart fairly regularly? Okay. Remember, that's how you guys encourage each other. That's your appointment setting time. So unless you have a legitimate, like you have to do another job reason to not be there, you should be doing kickstart. Now, maybe you're out door knocking. Okay, you're not going to be on Zoom. Can you jump on for 15 minutes and practice what you're going to say with the group before you go door knocking? Let's encourage one another. If you can't get there till a little late because of circumstances, don't let that be an excuse to not go at all. Okay, we know everybody's schedule is different and we have that time for the room to be open so everybody can encourage each other. So don't let um, the fact that it's just 9 to 11 and your schedule doesn't fit into that box stop you if you've got a window to be in there, okay? Because for those of you that do go regularly, and I know there's a handful on here, is it helpful when more people show up? Yeah, nobody wants to be there alone. And it's helping you set your appointment. And that's where you're going to, when you're in there, practice your conversations for the first 15 minutes. 
mute, go about your lead gen business, and then share in the chat. Every time you set an appointment, put it in the chat. You get a referral, put it in the chat. Somebody cusses you out, put it in the chat. Doesn't matter what it is, all the good and the stuff, put it in the chat to help encourage each other, okay? No one's in this alone. No one succeeds alone, right? Isaiah's back there exercising while he's, while he's listening. Just trying to stretch out a little bit. I'm getting a little tight over here. <laughs> I'm getting old. I'm getting old. Oh, please. <laughs> All right. Any uh, any last thoughts, ahas from today? Anything you want to share? No, I will be brave. I promise you. Uh, I will start to, you know, don't care about rejections too much because I hate them. But, <laughs> but I will go more out there and be more brave. <laughs> well, good. I love to hear that, Adina. And think of it this way. It's discouraging. It Well, I should say it can be discouraging to hear no in however form it comes, right? But instead of worrying about the word no, think of it a different way. What does the word no, N-O, stand for? And there is a yes somewhere? Yes, but put it in the context of N and O. Some of you already know this. Not now. No, no. I don't know. Next opportunity. Yeah. Next opportunity. So for every no, you're that much closer to your next opportunity. Mindset matters. They're not all going to be yeses. That's a fact. All right, guys. Well, if there's nothing else, then everybody make it a great day. We'll see you in your respective groups today and uh, go get that appointment and those five new contacts. We'll see you next week. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you.